What's good, my dear language learning master? And welcome to a new episode of the Language Input Podcast, number 39, in which, as usual, I'm, I'm going to talk about a different topic related to, to the language acquisition process, you know, in order to help you understand that we can all learn any language when join the process every step of the way. I'm totally convinced, like I'm always saying, okay? And yeah, my goal is to help you understand that. And, you know, I, I, I'll try... I try to talk about all the different topics related to language learning, about all the different little details, nuances, you know. So, so whatever the topic I'm talking about, if if that's gonna be the one that helps you understand that you can actually relax and enjoy the process, you know, that's I'm 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 super happy about it. All right. And uh, yeah, so let's. With that being said, let's get let's get into today's episode. And today I want to talk about the role of errors or, or 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 the role of making mistakes in in the language learning process. Okay, and I already made an episode around the concept of error correction and how to. You know what? What's the best the best way to go about it? Whether you know the traditional way of going about it is it useful? Is it not? Etc. But today I, I want to talk about the role of errors in general when it comes to the language acquisition process. Like I said, right? And first of all, the, the first thing we need to understand is that they're perfectly okay. They're perfectly normal. They're perfectly natural. All right. And when it comes to this process, to this language learning process, when whenever I realize that something's natural, you know, I, 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 I it actually helps me relax. Cause it tells me we're doing the right thing, right? As opposed to trying to, you know, sort of hack the process or look for the latest shortcut in order to speed up the process or whatever you want to call it, right? Which is something that's never gonna work, by the way. And I've talked about it many times, right? But and obviously, as as we as we're getting started with the language, we're gonna make thousands of mistakes, and that's okay. Again, like I said, but even as as we move forward and we keep getting better and better, it's it's still gonna happen, you know. And and we see it all the time. Even native speakers make mistakes all the time. And it's okay, you know. There's nothing wrong with it. First of all, it's natural, like I said. And second of all, if you look at it, I'd say 99% of those mistakes make no difference when it comes to delivering the message, right? So they they, they don't change the message at all. You know, they, they they don't have an impact on communication. Let's put it that way. Okay. They, they just grammar errors of you know conjugation or dif- i don't know like war endings or whatever you want to call it that like i said make no impact whatsoever in the communication right because the other person perfectly understands what we're saying all right and i do understand the fact that we can i would like to communicate the best possible way all right like you know I feel that I feel the same way myself. Like I, I like to communicate to the best of my abilities, right? In, and if I if I can communicate in a way that I don't make mistakes, awesome, right? But once again, let's get back to what's natural, <laughs> and we're gonna keep making mistakes, like I said. And once again, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it, all right? And also. That that's like the first thing that I think the first important thing that I think we need to understand that it's okay to make mistakes, right? And the second thing, and getting back to to the previous episode that I talked about, we also need to realize that there's no shortcut, hack, or conscious way to avoid making those mistakes or get rid of them quickly, whatever you want to call it, right? All those desperate attempts that we adults try to look for all the time, right? 
well, like the traditional grammar approach tries to look for, right? <laughs> you know, there's no such a thing, like I said. So, and getting back to that episode, you've probably realized a million times that when you've made a mistake in, in a foreign language, you, yourself, realize right away that you made a mistake, right? Did it happen to you? And I mean, you, you made you made a grammar mistake and like three seconds later, you realize you made a mistake yourself, right? Because you had studied the rule in grammar classes or whatever, right? And so the thing is, consciously knowing the rule or consciously memorizing the rule doesn't mean that you're going to be able to actually get it right in a real-time conversation because they're just two different, two completely different processes, right? So, and actually, it's going to work in one or in one of two ways. Like, either right before you, you're about to say something, you you realize you realize that you you were about to make a mistake, a mistake, sorry, or like I said before, right after making it, you are going to realize i mean you're yeah you're gonna realize that you made a mistake and what we at those do all the time is we consciously correct those mistakes from other people right hoping that that's gonna help them realize where they made a mistake and they're not gonna make it again in the future which is not true because <laughs> we all know we, we're gonna keep making that mistake right and we see it with kids all the time as well. Like they make grammar mistakes when they're starting out with the language, right? And I'm sure you can you can think of a lot of examples, whatever your native language is. And if if you pay attention to it, their parents most times they they try to actually consciously correct them, but the kid keeps making the same mistake over and over again. Did, you know, did, did you realize, right? Try, try to pay attention to it if, if you get a chance. So, and what I mean by that is that what the kid, in this in this example, what the kid needs in order to stop making that mistake is not for his or her parents to consciously correct that, but actually what he or she needs is to keep getting exposed to the language and to listen to that specific word, sentence, structure, or whatever it is, many times the right way in context in the context of a story of a conversation of a game whatever it is right so we're, we're not gonna be able to get rid of mistakes by consciously correcting other people i mean we're not gonna help them get rid of those mistakes by consciously correcting them right they just need to keep listening to the language for as long as it takes until They've, they've listened to that specific structure so many times that they've actually acquired it and, and they, they're they actually capable of, capable of communicating it without making a mistake the natural way, right? Without consciously thinking about it, <laughs> if that makes sense. So, I'm, I'm getting back to, to the beginning of the episode. First of all, like I said, we need to understand that mistakes are perfectly okay. They're natural. They're, 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 they're going to happen all the time, right? And then the way of getting rid of them, or I mean, not getting rid of them, but the way of becoming more and more fluent and, and making less mistakes is not to actually try to consciously understand what's going on. <laughs> Or where we made a mistake, but to keep getting exposed to the language, to comprehensible input, of course, as usual, right? And, and the reason I mention that is, well, because consciously knowing the mistake is not going to help us get rid of them, first of all, but also because we've all felt we've all felt it, right? That you're trying to communicate in in a foreign language and you make a mistake, and a native a native speaker or not native, but most times native speaker corrects you. And first of all, like I said, it's not going to help you. But second of all, how do you feel when that happens? And the dangerous part of it is most times you right away, you're going to realize that you're becoming afraid of speaking because you don't want to make mistakes again. So so you, you realize right away, but 
some other times it's actually kind of subconscious or tricky in a way that you don't you're not aware of it but if you pay close attention to it in that specific conversation you're getting more and more shy and you're you 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 stop communicating because you're just afraid of making mistakes it's just it's what that conscious correction of your mistakes is gonna is gonna do to you right and i'm sure you can all relate to that situation so that to me is the 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 role of of um mistakes when when it comes to to learning language first of all we need to understand that they're natural they're gonna happen all the time you know especially when when uh, when we're getting started with the language right and then there's no consciously there's not there's no conscious way of getting rid of them there's no hack there's no mm, trick there's no hint there's no no there's nothing like it all you need in order to communicate in a better way in order to become more fluent is to keep getting exposed to the language like i said so yeah that's it for today everyone <laughs> and also like a little piece of advice in the end that, that that's what i do when when i'm communicating in a foreign language like if i'm if i'm talking to someone or if i'm in a situation in which either it's, it's already happened or i feel like someone's about to correct what i'm saying i let them know right away like i don't want them to correct me because you know, I, I explained the whole thing, right? Because I think it's not going to help me. And because that, that's not how the process works in our minds, like I'm always saying. So I really feel more relaxed when I do that because I know they're, they're going to stop correcting my mistakes. They might, they might still do it a couple of times because we're so used to the traditional grammar approach that we can't really help it, right? <laughs> but, you know, eventually they're, they're going to stop doing it. And... I just know that if if they do it, it's not going to help me and I'm going to feel bad about myself, even if I'm aware of it, right? I, I, even if I'm aware of the fact that that that's actually happening, <laughs> you know, even if I'm aware of it, like I said, subconsciously, it's still going to affect me and I'm going to become more shy and I'm going to stop communicating as much. I'm going to start talking as much, like I said, right? So that's what I do on a personal level when I'm communicating with with an native speaker in, in a foreign language. Because one, and I said, I, I'll say it again, it's natural, it's perfectly okay to make mistakes. It's natural consequence <laughs> of learning language it happens with native speakers all the time as well so no wonder it's going to happen with non-native speakers right and then the, the way to get rid of them or the gate to the, the way to not get rid of them because that's not going to happen but the way to make less mistakes right is like i said to keep getting exposed to the language to get, get to keep getting exposed to comprehensible input because that's what's gonna help us get it to the next level and and communicate in a better way in a much more fluent way and stop making some of the mistakes right that that we were making all the time but again it's gonna happen it's gonna happen the natural way <laughs> you know there's no way to to trick ourselves or trick our brains or to hack the system or to hack the process or to speed things up whatever you want to call it or to find a shortcut it, it, there's just nothing like it in 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 the true language acquisition process and i actually i personally believe that's actually a relief and that's going to help us relax because wh when uh, i feel like that's the case for many other things in life but i'm going to stick to to the language acquisition process <laughs> i feel like whenever like whenever i feel like something happening in my journey is natural i'm okay with it because i feel like that's the the right way to to go about it like once again mistakes right 
I feel like making mistakes is totally natural because it happens all the times, even to native speakers. And again, I just need to keep getting exposed to comprehensible input in the language to get better at it, right? <laughs> and there's no shortcut to, to speed up the process, like I said. So yeah, with that being said, I, I thank you once again for, for getting this far in this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you relax, as usual. I, I, I hope it keeps adding to to all the ideas that I'm trying to, to bring up here, you know, to, to help you understand that we can all learn any language when join the process. That's my main goal, to help you understand that, I mean. And yeah, as usual, let me know in the comment section below whether you enjoyed the episode, whether you have any comment on it, any opinion, any suggestion for future episodes, any question you may have, you know, feel free to let me know. I'll be more than happy to help you out if I can. You'll be giving me ideas for future episodes, which I am appreciate beforehand. And yeah, and I wish you a good day, whatever you might be, my dear language learning master. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you.